Hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, the story has ended. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm referring to WWE. So if you don't know what that is and you're not into it, you probably do not know what the heck I'm talking about. But the story is finished. But the story does continue with The Wire. What's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting his shot. Today, we are up to episode... 10, I believe, of The Wire Season 1, titled The Cost. I cannot believe we are making our way this quick throughout this show. Um, and you guys probably think to yourselves, oh, I'm liking the upload rate of this guy. He's doing okay. Trust me, I haven't even started. Just wait till we get going. We're still cooking. We're still cooking. And this show is cooking up. It's absolutely insane. Let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. Come on, Bam Bubs. That's the life you could have. Come on, man. Get clean. Come on. I'm not going to get too attached to any character in this show. Because like, you just don't know what's going to happen. Hey. There you go. Why does... That guy looks so familiar. Come on, Bubs. Resist the urge. Bubbles, resist the urge. Come on, don't pop. Don't pop. Don't blow up, please. Yo, am I wrong in saying that the actor who plays Bubbles is the best so far in the show? Like, the range he has displayed is fantastic. Like, I just think he is the best in the show thus far. And then he dropped the bracelets. Greg's. My fault, eh? Should never left you alone, homie. Nah, shit. Man, you don't tell him when you did, I'm gone. <laughs> he acknowledged that. He acknowledged that. Fuck, we come back on this cunt, so. We don't. Not now. You feel me? <laughs> Listen, your advice, stringing your advice was good advice. You know what I'm saying? I want to let you know that. We ain't acting all hard now, are we? I want you to let him know we willing to squash this if he is. And then what the fuck if he ain't? Nah, this nigga live in the town, so he gonna listen. If we parlay, and then when he if we parlay, <laughs> boom, okay, smoke him, say no more. Gotcha, put that out there. All right, that cap we is wearing, <laughs> it was on your ass after the game. See, if they own you, then they got a name. If they got a name, then they know you ain't got no license. Yeah, but they don't want no traffic charges, you know what I'm saying? They don't want no humble shit. I think they was trying to see where I might go. <laughs> Where the fuck was you going to take that ass? I was taking you to the barbershop. <laughs> Ice cube, baby. <laughs> Get a fade, baby. I know, B, but you motherfuckers are honest. What the fuck? We always been honest. We just got to be careful. Well, you not been talking on any phones. You not been touching any drugs. And from now on, you are not doing the money runs. Me and Baker, we going to take care of that shit until this whole thing cool off. Let me get that pager. Oh, what's up? You serious? serious. <laughs> New York supply number only. And these motherfucking local cats want to talk to you. They got to talk to me. <laughs> it's going to be hard to contact the king now. <laughs> you got to build a wall around you, baby. Yeah, exactly. We're putting layer upon layer. Ogre, baby. Ogre Hello, style. Mom, Shrek. Fresh phone. Judge Gwynn sends his regrets. He can't make lunch. Like I got the plague all of a sudden. There's your new phone. 30 days. A couple of weeks ago, when Burrell wanted to take down the wire, you know I'm breaking off in his ass. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, there's a lady here. Rhonda talks more trash than both of us, Your Honor. <laughs> I have never been anything other than ladylike, Your Honor. Detective McNulty is going out of his way to insult an officer of the court. McNulty, I hold you in contempt. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so Never McNulty heard? to respond like that. Who doesn't? That is so true. I don't know. Phelan isn't in it. Not on the ticket. Why the fuck not? Maybe it's the company he keeps. Oh, and it, no, it goes deeper. It goes deeper than that. Especially when you get to growing. And so you add the bedroom set. A nice bedroom set. Like the one they got down at the baby store on Howard Street. That's a room right there. And I think if I can get some better furniture and put your stuff in the other bedroom. <laughs> like the den. <laughs> Cause it's Sophie you got seen better days. I think you know that much. When the supply gets low, they page this mope. 
who always calls back from a payphone way the fuck out in Northwest. <laughs> same phone, same pattern. So y'all think that he's taking the re-up order and that the stash is somewhere near the Mondo Mart, right? You are on it, Detective Sidney. <laughs> okay, so what do you do with this? What do we do? We're gonna be sitting on that payphone in Pimlico all day and all night waiting on Mr. Mondo Mart. Herc, too. Herc's out this whole week, in-service training. That's too bad. So instead of three eight-hour shifts, you two are gonna have to pull 12 hours. <laughs> out of the job. You kill me now. Oh, I never on the wire. I keep talking about how this kid's all tore up about the dead stick-up boy. I'm gonna see for myself. Huh? You need us, we're on the radio. I'm okay. gonna bring in Wallace. I'm telling you, that was a perfect comment um, in one of the videos saying, if Lester Freeman's on your ass, if he's on your case, you just better turn yourself in because it's going to be a long ride. <laughs> Is that actual shit? <laughs> Why do I have a feeling he's gonna get capped? <laughs> Her ass is outside the shithole and wait for some little project yo to raise up. Mrs. McNulty raised no fools. Four Fadley's crab cakes in the bag, 24 Dutch beers in the box. Fadley's, huh? <laughs> You're alright, McNulty. I don't care what all the motherfuckers downtown say about you. You're alright, McNulty. <laughs> Copy that. 15 the minutes. cemetery. I know that's hey, what's what. What's the deal with the yo boy? What would he do? He stumbled into my world. Still, I thought I might let you know Avon's people got in contact. Talking about they want to end the beef. They offered me some kind of um, amnesty. Amnesty. Look, I, I, I chill out on the manhunt and stop them. Um, hitting them in the head for their product. They gonna call off the bounty. Take the truth, Omar. I might. They ain't trying to play me. Yeah, that's all right. They said the, they want to parlay on it. Parlay? The truce could be a setup. I don't know, man, but right now I need some assistance from y'all. Yo, yo, son, I go to the ER. And when we get back to Avon, you know we're going to have his henchman laying in the parking lot for me. Look, I know you're friendly with a couple of doctors, right? Right? Oh, 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 that set Snoop Dogg's ass up. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Barksdale. Avon Barksdale. Running through the Dex and Haida. See what comes back. They damn locked up Andre 3K. Oh, my gosh. All right, I'm going to check around, see if anybody's working these names you're giving us. And if you're full of shit, pal, I'm going to know it quick. But what happens to me while you check it? Eagle Street. City jail, motherfucker. Three stacks, man. Came home last week. I ain't seen him since after I can't believe it. Yo, he's got Orlando's in his name, too. That ain't good. Too fucked up to drive home, McNulty. And bunk. They done got Wallace in there. Kid gave us a murder. One oh, damn. Put in Stringer Bell. Oh, yeah? Picks out Wee Bay Bird and Stinkham from photo arrays. Puts them all up at the Greeks the night they grab up Omar's boy, Brandon. Puts Bell in the truck, too. When they kill the stick out boy, the motherfuckers dumped the body in the alley right by where this kid and all the other low rise hoppers lay their heads. Can you imagine? All he can think about. You tell him he's gonna have to testify? Not yet, we'll get there. Problem is, what do we do with him now? Yeah, he might be scared to testify after what happened to that witness. And at the same time, I love the juxtaposition of Bubbles um, trying to get clean and then Wallace sort of in the early stages of a dangerous addiction, possibly going down the path of Bubbles um, in terms of what happened to Bubbles. He had a kid, relationship ruined with his sister, relationship ruined with his baby mama, relationship ruined with his family, um, just along the lines of that. So we've seen the outcome of it with Bubbles. We've seen Bubbles hopefully trying to get clean and then juxtaposed with a young kid age 16, Wallace, starting off with that early phase of addiction um, on hope, 
like not hopefully a downward spiral but on a downward spiral and hopefully he can get fixed up and hopefully i don't know if the cops are going to try and talk some sense to him about the addiction or just going to use him completely for the case like getting some professional help because he's 16 man That was good. That was the guy from the court. They tried to turn. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, man, it's me. Guess who's up in here? Pimping ass, Orlando, from the club. Yeah, courtside. Why does he look like Buster Rhymes? I, I, there's so many familiar faces in this show. I don't know. <laughs> Damn, that guy got that freaking purge house. He so ready for that event. Since I was maybe 12. And how long were you the box still screwing the low rises? With D'Angelo? Not long. He came down from the towers like the beginning of the summer. Before that, I worked for Ronnie Moe. D'Angelo ever talked to you about what happened in the 221 building? With Pooh getting shot? How about anything else like that? Like what? No killings, murders. You see anything about a girl getting shot in an apartment up on the east side? Nah, D. D was good to me. Oh, nah, the window story. Yeah, right. he, he told, D told him the story. So. He was who you called at night when you saw the sticker boy at the Greeks, right? He told yeah, him the story on the orange there. sofa. It was in front of Bodie. And Stringer. He said Stringer was in the truck. He called you over. Asked you to point out the stick up boy. Alcoholic mother in the wind, no fixed address. He says he's got a grandmother down on the eastern shore, but he hasn't seen her in years. How about a hotel room? Hey, the one who's dying. No way the deputy proves a man part of stash is 16 year old. <laughs> Much less the room service. McNulty, mine too. Think y'all need to get with grandma down on the shore. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to lose. Doing this right now. You don't want to lose him before the trial. You don't have to set a hearing date or something like that. Christ, okay. Yeah. I fucking need a fucking lawyer. <laughs> I fucking need a fucking lawyer. What? <laughs> Shoot. You can see that they got the security bars. <laughs> you got one right there. Cameras. Let's see, over the yard, out to the street. And I checked with Verizon, there's no phone service at that address. Well, that's a telltale right there. So what? We try to write a warrant for this place, right? Right? <laughs> Learn from the experienced young Carve and Cinder. <laughs> what are you seeing? You know the lieutenant has me in office. I don't have my gun until the grand jury. You won't need one. On the street, no gun. No gun. Not for this. <laughs> Furthermore, Mr. McNulty, having utilized his sons in an act of police work involving a criminal suspect, actually lost track of him in a crowded municipal market. Ah, oh, did the this kids tell the mom? This is simply unacceptable, Your Honor. Be that as it may, an emergency ex parte order is an extraordinary request, Mr. Palm. You actually want me to limit visitations to afternoons only, and you want Mrs. McNulty present at all visitations? Come on. It is not a single lapse, Judge. <laughs> Mr. McNulty has time and again failed to properly care for the children when they're in his custody. I wonder if the state attorney's doing this pro bono for, <laughs> for McNulty. Um, there's low key interesting here. The woman he's currently banging or like, you know, F buddy, whatever you want to call it. But not, not butt dialing, one night standing. I forgot what it is. Friends, what, what's it called? I forgot what the term is. Well, you just a uh, booty call, is it? That that that's that's the term. The woman he's do, he's doing that currently with is sitting right beside him, defending him, and then obviously his ex missus is right there. The baby mama is right there. So I'm guessing she found out from the kids, right? Like, 
I have a list of recent events, Your Honor, that justify an order. The kids had a Y on McNulty, man. <laughs> nope. Your Honor, I'm officially clueless. That's not a specific field, man. State, I should not actually be here. She right, playing dumb, people, baby. Before you have me make a ruling on an emergency petition, everybody here just needs to take a deep breath, huh? Literally, come on. Yeah, the, the family court judge is right here, man. Now then, is Mr. McNulty capable of having a civil conversation with Mrs. McNulty? Yes, Your Honor. And is Mrs. McNulty equally capable of having a conversation with Mr. McNulty? <clears throat> yes. Good. Thank then you. Then I'm going to lunch. Thank you. When I return, if we can't busy this court with something just a little more engaging than the problems of the McNulty's. Exactly. Exactly. Now, that, that, that is exactly right. If there's one thing I learned um, last year doing my practical legal experience, we're doing a subject called litigation estate practice. Uh, it's litig litigation and estate practice. And then we got to wills and stuff like that. Is like the worst thing you could possibly do to the court is anger them by wasting their time and try all possible solutions such as mediation, arbitration, conciliation, whatever, or um, alternate dispute resolutions before actually going to court. That is the most useless sort of um, case to go to court right there. And yeah, you pissed off the judge and the judge ain't gonna wanna hear any of it. Like literally a waste of the court's time. Money, resources, whatever. Like, it's uh, she right. She, I, I holler at that judge, man. For me, I understand that. I'll carry that. But the least our people can do is throw down a little something to pay the bondsman. That's a deed of transfer for the club. And the other yep. thing is a license transfer application to the liquor board. And they're gonna, they're, they're not gonna back him up. Last week. But a front has to be clean. But right now, you like that. You a sacrificial lamb, so, buddy. Crazy. I want my bail paid. D'Angelo, out like that. You send me a bondsman, I'll sign. Is that what you want me to tell him? <laughs> this... I asked you to sign and you wouldn't. This lawyer crazy, man. Hmm? This lawyer crazy. You're just the front, man. You're just the owner of Orlando's. You wanted to be in the game, right? Now you're in the game. You're going to face the consequences. show up with her? Elena, you went for an emergency ex parte. I grabbed whatever lawyer was standing around. Oh, she was standing. That is true. That is okay, true. Ask her if she wants the pictures back. Let's see. I've got her at the restaurant with you pulling out her chair. I've got her at the motel parking lot with you opening the car door for her because you're such a fucking gentleman now. You know, I can't believe you hired Buckman. Son of a bitch never made a case that counted. Yeah, well, he caught your cheating ass. Oh. Elena, why are we here? Because you can't, you can't have Sean and Michael around criminals. You can't lose them in a Baltimore market. That's why. He wasn't a criminal. He was I a college was. student, man. It was a game we were playing. <laughs> it was daylight on a crowded street. They could have been following Al Capone. It would have been fine. Look, Elena, these are my sons. I love them. Do you hear? I love them. I'm not going to let them get hurt. It was still reckless, though. Very reckless. I love you, too. Now, that, do. now that's some bullshit. Nah, no, I'm checking. I'm checking. Does she know about the detective and the pictures? No, why would I tell her about that? And are the, the two of you still uh No. Cap! Yes. <laughs> A little. Come on, let's let's make nice for the judge. Yes! Like, why would you cheat on your wife, like, in the first place? Like, it's so stupid, McNulty. Like, why, man? You got a great woman right there. We'll get dinner first. Very good looking. Ain't so hungry. And you bang a lawyer. Come on. And you use the lawyer you're banging to come to you to court against your wife, ex-wife. That is a violation. I'm asking if you're going to be sick in my car. I kept now and then. You just snorting? Come on, Creed, man. You be out in the dead, too. Come on. We're going to be drug tested for these fights. We can't have cocaine there.
course, he said y'all would be paying my fee rather than his own self. Your fee? I'm doing like one of the marriage counselors. <laughs> about an hour to tell some fool he need to bring some flowers home. And charge another hour telling the bitch she ought to suck some cock every little once in a while. You know, keep a marriage strong like that. Speaking of cocksuckers. Oh, he showed up. He actually showed up. Don't believe we met. Proposition Joe. <laughs> Don't believe we met. <laughs> you ever steal from me, I kill your whole family. Alright. Y'all both feel on my guarantee, so respect that shit and say what you feel. I'm up out of here. I love how Stringer wearing the um, inmate attire. Orange. <laughs> I got a man who said he's gonna give you a life back, yo. So you think after what you did to Brandon, we supposed to find some even on this, huh? Yo, I don't know shit about shit. Alright? I'm just a messenger. Whatever, man. You know there's dead on both sides, right? There's gonna be a whole lot more if this beef keep up. If the truth be told, there'll be more soldiers in one half than the other, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, look here, son. You tell Boggs that he's been paid back for what he did to my peoples. As for his product, well, man's gotta earn a living, you know? I don't know no what he called Boggs, though, B. The man I'm talking about can't have his shit taken like that. I won't do. All right. Tell him to throw me some cash, then. And we'll see. About five or ten thousand. Yeah, you know I mean for my retirement, Holmes. <laughs> How careful is Stringer Bell? Very. I don't know no one named Box <laughs> Still, we got him tied to the branding killing. Have to be enough for one day's work. Can we talk about how fantastic that conversation with Stringer and um, um, Omar was? How the conversation, um, obviously, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Um, Joe. Joe. Um, how he left the conversation and the camera held there following both of them around the fountain. It was this sort of beautiful, just the camera walking backwards, walking backwards, following around the um, fountain in sort of like an extended cut. And then when they stand it still, um, it's the trademark wire camera technique that they use a lot. And I find they use a lot in conversations where the camera pans, it's always doing like a 180 pan. It pans to the left and then it pans to the right. A geek's going around and around and then they cut to the close-ups inevitably of them talking. But I love that. I love that how they're walking around the fountain in one take, let the actors have their conversation. Let the scene play out. And then, obviously, when they stand it still, it continued that as the camera panned side to side. Was, I love that stuff. I love it. I love extended takes with scenes. It's so good. Oh, damn. Um. Did what I could for y'all. Omar's done more than enough. <laughs> A five G's, B. Oh, shit. Hey, ten, too. He said ten. <laughs> I'm saying, though, how are we supposed to pay that? We well, talking about going through Joe, but I'm like, fuck Joe. Thank you, my love. You're making them, baby. <laughs> Yo, Greg's cap game this episode has been strong. She wearing hella nice caps. Hey, yo, 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 yo. She run a damn art gallery. <laughs> you see, police in this town ain't about shit. <laughs> Come on, Kima. Yes, it doesn't hurt to get a little McNulty once in a while. <laughs> oh, don't go there, officer. Hey, Kima. How did you know you wanted to be a cop? I mean. How did you choose that? When you, when you were little, did you think about it at all? Or... Ma, Ma. Ma. Now we in the middle of this parking lot, and we're rolling around and shit, and this motherfucker steady kicking my ass trying to get away. <laughs> and I look over, and I see these black patterns 
and these uniform blue pants. Look up. That is Jolly Smoke. Jolly fucking Smoke. You know, this guy's a legend. He looks down at me and he smiles with a little quiet light. And he drops his cuffs. He says, Here you go, Rook. That's all we can do. Here you go, Rook. And then he dropped the bracelets and walked away. Damn. I mean, I know you don't like it. Shit. I was proud. <laughs> All right, we in public, man. We at a table. <laughs> they Charlie smooching, all right. We're gonna start picking up pieces of Barksdale's world we never even knew about. I've been hell looking for you people. Hell ain't gonna shoot anyway. <laughs> oh shit! Kima in the house. <laughs> State police, CID out of Pikesville. Name of Troy Wiggins. But pay no attention to the man, because he's about 90, 95% pure bullshit. Mm. And he gangsta. <laughs> she just talk like that because I had it when she was good. She, <laughs> the ugly ass motherfucker turned me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the thing, boys and girls. I'm doing a reverse buy down on the Rumble, right? And I get this West Side asshole nibbling on four ounces, right? A whole four ounces? I know, he ain't much, but. I get him in the boat and he starts flopping around saying he can buy weight from some motherfucker named a Barksdale. I never heard of no Barksdale, but I put the name into Dex and the computer has Avon Barksdale in it as an active Baltimore city target. So I go down to City Narcotics in Dawson. He sends me down here to see y'all. So I'll see y'all. <laughs> Wendell O. As an old shit I tried to buy from a state police blocker. <laughs> it would be Wendell Orlando blocker, would it? Yeah. You on it? Police open police. Orlando. You can't see faces without those. You don't wear those while you work in D, though. <laughs> hey, yo, girls that rough glasses are hella cute. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> For that kind of cooperation, I'll drop a few years and call it fair. Daniel's in here? Uh oh. Call from deputy commission for you. Uh oh. No. Yeah, put it on loudspeaker. Come you on, conference much. call. <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't know. I need um, a place of my own. I had some bed, uh, some sheets, some clothes. I, de I definitely need some new clothes. <laughs> How long you been clean? Three days. Serious about it? I mean, who knows? See, the parallel storyline. What the fuck am I going to do with a clean informant? With Bubs. Did you think about that? <laughs> Bubs looking for a house, looking for a home as well. And then Wallace right. as well. They need a... I'm on it with you. They're both sort of displaced individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what the fuck? Give me some love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I think I can get, you know, a mattress, my own place, every, everything for like a couple hundred dollars. All right. We'll talk. I gotta be somewhere tonight, so hit me on my page tomorrow. Tomorrow? I got you. See, what if there is no tomorrow, the man? Like, it's just. <laughs> buy weight, not from Boxdale or Bell. How can he be sure? How much dope or coke do you think gets Avon Boxdale into the room? A kilo? Two kilos? 20 kilos? We are not gonna buy our way up the ladder here. These people do not touch the drugs. They don't go near the drugs. The wire is what gives us Boxdale. It gives us the whole crew. Day by day, piece by piece. You don't want that wire. Bye, bus. See? It's what I asked you for months ago. He's forcing. It's what we do successfully, time and again, to make these cases. He's forcing Daniels' hand here. Well, it's like Lester always like says, you follow the drugs, you get the drugs, you follow the money, who the hell knows where you end up? That's why I asked for that money. They come on down for $5,000. I'm like, man, please. Set up. Hey, look at Holmes. I ain't asked for much, but um, 
I'm a little light on traveling money. I'm saying I could go around the block and get myself paid. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm all going away for a little while. I'm gonna need you for the Gantt trial. Go easy, Omar. <laughs> Dapping him up. <laughs> Dapped up a murderer. <laughs> I'll be up there at the tent, right? That'll work. So Kima will be in the car for the buy, front as I see as girl. Look in the park, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's your weapon gonna be? He might pat me, so it has to stash in the car. I figure when Savino gets in the car at the cut rate, I'll be going in back. It'll be up under the rear seat. Now he needs to get right back into it to pay the bondsman and the lawyer. All right, let's make this work. Let's see if it works. Careful. That's my career you're holding there. You got a unit? Talk to the mezzanine. Give me the keys, man. Nah, I'm driving, motherfucker. I don't know if McNulty likes the... I don't know, he hasn't opposed this decision. Like, the buy bus. I don't know if it's a bit premature. Like I said, Deputy doesn't... Deputy Burrell doesn't want the wire in because who knows what's going to be said on that wire about the money. Come on, Bubbles. Three days. Let's make it four. Come on. Death row here. Ain't up. Ain't up. Ain't up. Yes, ain't up. Death row. Just go to your sister's basement, man. The music's gonna block the wire, ain't it? Oh, okay, no, sorry, sorry. They're going up north, stay loose. Oh, no, 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 okay, it did, it did. Yeah, something's fishy about this. The way the scene has been set, it's great. There's an aura of mystery about it. Like, there's uh, something ain't up. Something, it ain't up, it ain't up. Cow. I'll be right back with your shit. That sign said Longwood, but I could swear this is Warwick. Hoppers be turning to signposts to fuck with y'all. Damn. I make it where on the north side of Warwick. In an alley. I don't know shit. Half a block west of Longwood, maybe? I hope y'all copy that. It's got the right feel for you. No. You creeping close? Again. It better not be long, because see, I don't know where the stash is. And if they're dragging us all over this part of town, you know. What's yeah. That? What? Something ain't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit ain't right. Get the gun, get the gun, get the gun. Signal 13, signal 13. Gunshots. Gunshots. Officer down. 2900 is dark. All units, all motherfucking units. Fox truck. What are we looking for? car with a brown vinyl roof. Parked in those alleys. Fox in route. Yo, that chopper's up real quick. SUV west on Warwick, make next right. Yeah, he dead, he dead, 100%, yeah. This is so good. Oh, 
Come on, man. Rest Kimo. Rest Kimo. No, no, you can't end the episode like that, man. Come on. Fuck, man. Oh, you gonna make me binge watch this shit? Come on, man. I, I was literally about to pause before that whole situation happened. I was gonna say, can we talk about how great, like, how fantastic or, like, how well this show creates tension? Like, how well that whole sequence was constructed right there? And that's why... When you focus on, you know, when you don't need, you don't need to put or insert traditional score music, this tense sort of music that goes up to a crescendo. Oh, it's a tense scene. It's about to happen. You use the environment. You use the natural sound. Diegetic sound is so good at it. And you had these established shots of these dark alleyways, hooded figures, Kima alone with um, Orlando. Um, and then again... It's the way the sound design was constructed as well. Um, you had the shootout happen or you had the first shots fired and then it left it ambiguous as to what happened with Kima because obviously her feed cut out um, and she was shot, but it left it ambiguous for a while. It left it, it left you on the edge of your seat. And the more time these cops, the more time the chopper, for instance, took longer, the more time that it took for the chopper to find the car or the more time it, looked, it took for Cinder and Carve to find the car, the more time it took for Daniel and McNulty um, to locate the car. That's time ticking for um, that's time ticking for potentially um, Kima right there. Like, was she bleeding out? Was she, was she dead shot? Like, the more they left the camera off Kima, the more the tension kept going up, kept going up, and your blood was boiling. It was racing. Everything. It was so good. And then again, accompanied that by the reactions of Carv, the reactions of Cinder, Daniels, uh, McNulty, the state of panic with everyone, and McNulty, you know, trying to remain composed and perform CPR. Um, yeah, hopefully they can res. Like, I don't know if it's confirmed she's dead, but it seemed like there was no pulse, and it seemed like she was out. So, oh my gosh, and it's like the episode she talks about you know the dangers of being a cop with a girlfriend at the table and why she's worried about her oh man like that wasn't a rookie task at all right there that wasn't a rookie raw oh, man like it was crazy what what a sequence right there now it's got me thinking who set up orlando is it just a bad buyback is it about uh is it just a bad sort of like scheme right there gone wrong with the people he hooked up with is it set up by avon and his boys knowing that you know He's back out on the streets um, and he's potentially snitching. So we got to get rid of him. So we set up this thing. And then that 30 grand is gone as well. That 30 grand is run up and hustled. Um, so yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm getting right into the next episode after this. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, Pretty Boy Moses, take care. God bless. Peace.